Hello everyone and welcome to my second ever Blender tutorial and in this one we are going to attempt to model the North American XB70 Valkyrie which you see here currently in Photoshop. This is a blueprint from the-blueprints.com and that site has some free blueprints, some that are pay for and this is a free one and uh, you do have to sign up but signing up is free and um, there are a lot of blueprints to choose from so whatever you want to model that's a good place to start if you want to get it. and basically this tutorial is how to take a blueprint and make a model out of it or a simple model at least we are not gonna be very detailed this is definitely not going to be an airplane worthy of flight sim 10 or x-plane 11 or anything like that i just want it in kerbal space program the thing about the valkyrie that makes it difficult to make in kerbal space program with the existing parts is the outer edge of the wing uh, goes down when it goes to high Mach numbers. This is a plane that was designed to go to Mach 3. And the thing about it is, if you try and use a hinge for that in Kerbal Space Program, you know, make a wing part here and then put a hinge and another wing part, it tends not to like that once you get past Mach 1. The instability is uh, pretty severe. So we're also going to talk about how to add an animation. So we're going to have the outer portion animated. There's a catch though. If you animate a part in Kerbal Space Program, you can't attach things to it. And one thing we're not going to model in here are the control surfaces because control sur surfaces are completely different. They should be different parts. You should uh, probably should not put the control surfaces on your main model because they have, you know, independent action and everything. So we're not going to be making the canards and we're not going to be making the control surfaces in the back here. And that means that we have to leave off these two here because those are on the portion that is animated. So there is a catch there. And also as far as the vertical stabilizer, um, we'll leave off the rudder. I might model the vertical stabilizer itself. Uh, so yeah, that is the plan. Actually, I think the canards, I'll say, I don't know if they're all moving or if they actually have just part of them move. Anyway, we'll get started in Blender and try this out. So when you begin Blender, of course, you have the cube. Let's delete the cube, delete the camera. I mean, you can keep the camera if you want. That's no problem. Delete the light. And we need a cylinder. Pretty much all planes start as cylinders. And I tend to, there's no rule about this. But I tend to want to start a cylinder horizontal, but that's not properly horizontal. We want it 90 degrees in the x-axis, 0 in the y, 0 in the z, there. Now, next thing we need to do is look up the dimension of the XB70. And it seems to be, based on Wikipedia, to be 56.39 meters long. Okay, now we want to apply the rotation because now the length direction seems to be y here, but let's see what happens if I type 56.39 meters in the y direction. Oh, right, because this y direction is the model's own y direction, not the y direction globally. So we want to undo that. We, want to, we really want to undo that. And we want to do, and undo is control Z, and rotate, by the way, is R, but typing it in is probably better in this case. And we want to do control A to apply the rotation first. And now when I go to type in 56.39 meters here, it goes in the right direction. Now you have two choices. Uh, one, the zero zero point is where the cockpit is. Two, the zero zero point is where the center of mass is. And the difference is, well, Normally in Kerbal Space Program, automatically the zero zero point is the center of mass of the model. There is a way to change that. It is a COM offset in the configuration file. So you can offset the COM for the model. The trouble is the cockpit. Uh, by default, the easiest way to put in a cockpit is to put it at the zero zero point. If you want to put a hatch, it pretty much has to be at the zero zero point. So if you want Kerbals to enter and exit the plane, you really want to shift it back so that the cockpit is back there. So 
I, in this case, I am going to want to move this so that the rough location of the cockpit is at the zero, zero point, and I'll just use a COM offset to put the COM in the right place later on. So that's the way I want to go. Now we need to bring our blueprint in here. And oh, by the way, if you want to use the shortcut keys, uh, the translate is G, of course, and rotate R, and I'll try and remember. So I hold down shift and use the middle mouse button to pan like this. Uh, right click doesn't do what it used to do. <laughs> I'm going to be trying to right click things a lot in this because I'm used to Blender 2.7. Uh, nine and now it's 2.8 and right clicking doesn't do what it does. That's what caused me problems with the loop cuts in the first Blender tutorial. I was constantly right clicking instead of light left clicking and that confused me. Anyway, let's bring in our images now that we've got the right size. Very important to get the right length first. The width and depth are not so important right now. So we need to get into an orthographic view. And so we see user orthographic over there. And I want to go into the right view. That's good enough. And we can just drag and drop our image. Now there are different ways of doing this. You can set the background image as a plane. To do that, you actually need to go into preferences, add-ons, and then there, there's an add-on option somewhere, import images as planes. You may want to do that instead of importing it as an empty the way I'm doing it here. If it's a plane, um, at least in 2.7.9, I think it's only confined to the orthographic view and it won't appear in other views. That might be less confusing for, uh, for many purposes. In this case, I'm just going to do it this way without the extra add-on. You'll notice there are a lot of add-ons that come with Blender that aren't enabled. They're, these are all here but they're not actually enabled. So some of the functions that you might be interested in might be hanging out here uh, waiting for you and you don't even know it. So <laughs> that's a little uh, side note. So uh, this is our right view and we can't really see the right view properly when we line it up like this. So what we want to do, oh, you know what? I When I imported it, I I scaled by dragging the end of it. I don't want to do that. There's a good reason not to do that. What we want to do is scale it up by pressing S and... Oops. Okay, fine. I'll, uh, can I not do that? Okay, place. Ah, there we go. Press S and scale up. The reason for that is because we're going to want to use an image on another dimension, right? Not just this view. We want the top view the front view, and we want to use the same scale, otherwise they're not going to be consistent. So S to scale, G to move, but you know, it's hidden by the model right now. So press Z, press four, and we're in wireframe mode. Shift, and then middle click to drag the image. And that's important because otherwise you might go out of orthographic view. Orthographic view means that things behind other things are displayed as if they're at the same depth. Otherwise, the scale, you know, of course, things further back m will seem smaller uh, if it's not an orthographic view. That'd be perspective view. So that's why we need to be in orthographic view to do this. So we need to scale this up even more. G to move it. Now, the dimension they gave for the length, I presume, is from the very tip to the very tip. So we're going to go with that assumption. And I'm going to line up the, this uh, tip protrusion here, the very tip of the nose, with the zero, 00 axis. So it seems to need to be a little bit longer. Now this is important scaling the background image right, because the cylinder is not going to stay the same. This cylinder is probably going to be shortened to that, so we're going to lose the length of it pretty soon. And eventually we'll zoom in in stages to make sure. Uh, that seems pretty close to the center line. It, 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 trying to be exact about it is having too much faith in the person who created the, the blueprint in the first place. <laughs> um, they're, they're not the most accurate things overall. Okay, we've got a 
I'm gonna just round that up 17.25 and uh, so that it's simpler okay so where that image actually is is there I don't want it there I want it a little bit further back and again an orthographic view will appear the same anyway but this is perspective view so it doesn't and we're gonna get into a different view I want to go into top view we are going to drag another one and 17.25 was our scale. Okay, and we need to rotate it. And that is not the way the axis is Z. And uh, this one seems to be the top view, so 90. Okay, and if uh, the gizmo ends up in an odd place you can always move the location using this so these numbers act as sliders too and we need to be in ortho view top orthographic make sure that says top orthographic so we're moving an X to slide it over here to meet the tip of that hold down shift get to the back uh, well, the very tip of the rudders seem to be a little bit longer. Maybe we'll try 17.2. We'll have to change the other one as well. For our purposes, I think this is good enough. So I'm going to go with 17.2 and leave off that little tip there and go. And so this empty this is the right view. Going to have to reposition it because of the scaling. Now we left off the little tip there. Let's see how it lines up in the back. Uh, I mean, it seems like this view is shorter than the top view, doesn't it? So, well, we'll just have to deal with that. Okay, so this is sort of how it's lined up right now. We once again don't want this image to be in the middle. We just want it to go off to the side there. That's fine. And now we are going to shape our cylinder. So what we're going to do first is we're going to go into edit mode with tab. So tab to go into edit mode, alt A to deselect. C to circle select and we're going to select all of these guys and then we're going to do a G Y to slide them over to here don't worry we'll eventually extrude that little bit okay so we've set them there and then we are going to use this loop cut and we can see that the shortcut is shift spacebar or control R I just click on it most of the time and so my problem last time was that I was trying to right click to slide it over, left click and hold to slide it over. I'm going to slide it over to the very beginning of the cockpit windows there. I'm going to do another one and I'm going to slide it over to where the curvature of the top part ends. I'm going to create another one to where the curvature of the, where it slopes down begins. And we're going to get another one to right around here where the intakes start. We're going to end up creating a lot of them, of course. We might as well create one here, create one right where the cockpit ends. Um, see this line? There's a line on the model. Why not? Now, to some extent, you don't want to do too many because I, this is going to end up being reasonably convex. So I could use this as the collider. Uh, this body. I'm ignoring the intake part for now. We're just doing the body. Okay. We're just shaping the top part. So I don't want to overcomplicate things. In fact, right now we can leave it there and then we'll see where it's off. So back to G. Whoa. Not, let's not do G. <laughs> G is bad. 
uh, just click uh, that to move and Alt A to deselect and now zoom in circle select the first set and we're sizing solely in the Z axis to do that we are going to press S and then Z before doing anything else so I'll first have to be in the window sorry um, and right click to undo the circle select so Alt A to deselect stuff C select right click S Z to confine to the Z axis because we don't know what's supposed to happen in the other axes yet and then shrink okay and then we can move it to right there Alt A C select right click S Z shrink and then we can use this to tweak it up and then SZ let's grow it again alright and if at any point you go like well this slope doesn't seem to be following it right you know you can add another cut here whoops I did that thing with the right click again um, right click uh, left click and hold slide and then SZ can increase the size of it and then move it okay and then remember to unselect alt a otherwise you're gonna end up scaling that one and the next one so we're gonna select these we wanted these in front of the cockpit window so let's make that pretty decisive we can slide it up first and then scale sz to there a slide up and see the cockpit's gonna be its own special thing eventually so uh, don't worry about that right now we're probably gonna have to cut that out and make it its own piece and this line up here does not follow that top ridge so loop cut uh, I'll let that part be for now. Now notice eventually we're going to want to cut this in half and then mirror it but right now we're not doing that so we're gonna make sure the body is all looking right and probably even create the engine nacelles at the bottom there. I'm not gonna create the engines because in Kerbal Space Program we have the engines through advanced jet engines and we'll just use those so I'm leaving off the control surfaces and the engines now there's this little lip here you see where the intake stuff start well really that's the front of the wing so that's where it mounts so we're gonna have to handle that carefully yeah I think uh, for that lip bit I'll just make a separate object if you think that it'll complicate the mesh in a weird way to try and make something you know and that's sort of a wedge that's a triangular wedge it's okay to just make a new object of it that's no problem okay and then this bit I only want the part above the wing now mind you I haven't actually made a Valkyrie before so this is like first time I'm doing it but the principles I've made an F-16 body not a great one but that's more complicated because of the curvature of the F-16 is very peculiar and it's got the bubble canopy too alt a otherwise we're gonna scale that other one SC scale down pretty much all the way okay and we can see that it's not really following the back of this properly so another loop cut and okay right top view so that's keypad 5 keypad 7 oh I probably didn't specify that so um, 
keypad 5, keypad 3 was where, what we are in before, keypad 5 make sure it's orthographic, keypad 3 is right, and then keypad 7 is the top view. Okay, everything else should be the same. We can check that though. Oh, look at that. Uh, remember, uh, we set this one to be in front of the cockpit. This is now further back. And again, we just have the image is not the same length in both directions. You gotta just trust this for the tail bit. Cylinder, tab, move that back there. Okay. And let's just scale everything to what it seems to be here. So SX now. And Alt A, C, select SX. Alt A, C, select. This is not the only way to select a loop like that. If you're in edge mode, there's a different key. Um, let me see which ones work these days. Okay, so edge mode. Okay, so Alt left click will select a loop if you're in edge mode. Alt A to deselect. Mm, and that, oh, that also selected just this loop. Okay, good. So Alt click the vertices to select the loop there. So that's easier. So we'll just do that. SX2, Alt A. Okay, we'll have to see whether the edge of everything lined up properly. Alt, click the vertices, SX, scale up. All right, let's see. Eh, that looks like it's following the body, okay. I'm more used to doing circle select, to be honest. But. Anyway, SX. Now there's some contour going on here. We'll have to take a look at the details. Now using the blueprint is not sufficient. So let's be clear. You want as many reference photos on hand as you can get. And I've got the Valkyrie and Google Images ready to go so that I can add details as necessary. Quite apart from everything else, first of all, this uh, blueprint has the wrong colors. We want it in white. And that's usually how the Valkyrie is viewed. I don't know if it was ever in this color. I'm not sure. Okay, SX. Oh, uh, no, that's not the one I wanted. Oh, okay. That That's probably why I don't do all click very often. Now it's deciding that this side, this, this loop is the better one. <laughs> Um, yeah, okay. I don't have time for that. Circle select time. Okay, this, this front portion is annoying me, so I'm gonna and our loop cut here, SX, expand that. Gonna add another loop cut. No, 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 no. Ah, uh, Control Z, loop cut and slide to this location, sliding with the left click. And then SZ, let's make it like that. Okay, now we get to do the protrusion. We can go out of orthographic for a sec. And we want to use the face select mode. And see this little dot here? That that's the oh I right click to select again. That's that's the face that we want. Back into top view. I'm going to press E and extrude. Oh it's too too big though. So right click control Z to undo because those fake uh, those uh, extra vertices were there still. Um not it's sort of an edge here. You can do that if you want. Um, first we can inset a little bit. I and uh, uh, no more. Scale S to scale down. So we could have done that 
We could have done the inset and then extrude on this portion as well if you wanted to. But I'm just going to do it here and then let me zoom out so I extrude to the right length and then press E to extrude. And that's looking about the right shape. Okay, let's get out of that. And instead of being in wireframe, let's press Z and 6 to look at the shape. Well, it's a good start. There's obviously places that we need better details. Let's uh, go with um, object mode and smooth. So shade smooth. Yep, but it's definitely serviceable. So let's take a look at some of the locations where we might want to add some details. So back in the top view, well, we can see the whole canopy business here. And I swear I thought I had <laughs> brought it to the right place, but okay. Well, we can do some cuts to deal with that. Back into tab mode and uh, why don't we do an extra loop cut here and shift middle mouse um, I swear it looks completely different <laughs> but okay um, knife cut you can use knife cut and we want to be in vertex mode to just literally draw the cuts always go from from line to line. We gotta get a triangle here, but it's not too bad. So there, commit that, this one. But you know what? That might be better after we mirror it. We've got the body. I think we should do, yeah, I, I don't wanna do all that until we mirror it. Okay, so let's start working on the engine to sell. I want to set the 3D cursor to 0, 0, 0, and that's under view here. And I want to reset its rotation as well. Don't know how it got all messed up like that. So it's up front here. That's not really where we want to spawn the cube, but we'll move it around. So we're going to spawn a cube, and that'll be our engine nacelle. And I'm going to move it to the back a bit going to use scale Y to make it longer. We're going to make it much longer. Remember to do this in object mode, otherwise it's going to be the same part as the body, the cylinder. And that's actually probably too long, but let's check. We need to be in orthographic view and right and Z4. I want to... I want to have the back edge actually to this location here. See right there? And that will be a good place to set that because uh, from there we'll need to extrude to make the rest of this. And the engine I'm going to leave for the engines that are currently in the Kerbal Space Program. We have an engine that's supposed to go on this. So we'll just make sure that the mounting points are there. Now uh, this lip here is the wing. Uh, the actual intake starts here. So we're going to size that up, right? Uh, extending the intake into the wing is fine. It'll just disappear in there. Uh, so we need to be tab in edit mode. Oh, whoa, geez, what's happened? We're in perspective, no. Okay, tab and then alt A and then circle select these two, move those forward. And let's shrink those S Z and that'll be good enough. And then we need to start making loop cuts. Well, let's start right from the, I don't, I don't know exactly what this thing at the bottom signifies, but it's important. The end of the intake is right here. So our first loop cut is loop cut here, drag there. Yeah, I'll have to take a look at a reference image for what to do about that part. Oh, I undid and I've got too much selected. You can tell I've got too much selected because the center of it is all the way back here. So let's deselect, select that, move that up. 
this seems to be the inside of the intake, and that seems to be the outside of the intake. We'll just select, uh, nope, you select, select this one, move it to the outside of the intake. And this bottom part we'll have to work on separately. That might be a separate object entirely. Mm, seems like we'll we'll put another loop cut right around here ish. And now the body curves down here. Where it starts curving down, we'll put we'll put another cut here. Well, let's zoom out, drag, move it here. Um, move that section down a bit, and then this uh, Alt A C select that. Move this down, and then uh, C select this whole thing. Move that there. Okay, now we will need to sort of make an empty cut in here where the engines can fit, and maybe I'll make this round portion here separate from this cube right now. But first. Our cube currently looks like, well, it looks like this, but it needs to be thicker. It needs to have more width to fit the six engines that this plane has. So, well, there are a number of ways to do it. I can get a new image and go to go through this one or move this image so that we can get the bottom view. Or uh, right now, I could just uh, temporarily move this over to this portion right here and do it. So rather than import a new image for the bottom view, I'm going to move this object. So we've got this object here, item. I'm going to apply its location. So that's control A, apply its location. I'm going to apply the scale as well. Um, so and its rotation is zero. So knowing that now compared to this top view, or this side view, this is flipped around 180. So we're going to turn that around 180 degrees. And then we need to position it right. And of course, the reason why I committed the location before is that we can put it back into its old position by just typing in 000 on the location and rotation. So let's see this. This image seems to be a little bit different from the other. Let's try and get it centered in X. That'll be good enough for now. Okay, so the issue is it's a different length. Uh, we, we'll try and move it back. No. Back. A little bit. And a little bit more. Let's get the front end matched up. Oh, and this line is important because that's the end of the intake. So that bit really needs to be matched up. The back end is fungible. We'll be extruding it anyway. Okay, so tab. See, uh, these two need to be squished together. S, X. Oh, wait. You can see that the center of... The thing is way back there, so I've got I've got nodes selected back there. So let's not do that. Alt A C select these now. S X. Let's get that really sharp. Okay. Alt A C select these two. S X expand out. Alt A. Next lines, C, select SX, and it should be that line. Now, this seems to be a gap here, so we're going to add a loop cut slide right around here where there's a mark there. And SX, uh, that'll be better. It's a better match. Alt A C select these two as X and S X. Whoa, that's not right. S X. Okay, again we see a mismatch right here, so loop cut right there and S X. 
right, alt A, C, select, and SX, out, 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 to there. Okay, so now it's looking more like the intake block at the bottom of it. But let's move it back to where it was before now. So tab, object mode, zero, zero, zero. And we can do the details back in the top view. So the first detail is obviously the intakes. We need to push these forward bits in. So back into edit mode, we need to act, select faces. I would rather go into solid mode, so Z6, and select this front face. Ah, but you know what? This would be a good time to start mirroring it. Because I don't want to have to do it on this side and then do it again on the other side, right? And this is why we start to mirror things. And we're going to loop cut this way, right there. And we are going to go into a top view. We're going to temporarily make our cylinder invisible. Now we've been working from the right view. So I'm going to get rid of this side here. Right, this, this has been how we've been looking at it. It doesn't really matter which side we get rid of, but anyway. So we need to be in vertex mode, deselect, select. Oh, we need to wireframe it because otherwise you only select the top ones and not the bottom ones. We just need to select these. It's nice to do the mirroring when you only have very few vertices to get rid of. And we're getting rid of these vertices. Keep in mind that you've created a hole here. There's a gap here, there's no actual face at that point. But we're just going to seal it up by mirroring, mirroring. And we are mirroring in X, in the X axis, so that's ticked. If you were mirroring in Y axis, that doesn't even show up, and Z axis is up there. Um, if you have the right axis ticked, but it doesn't show up, you might want to use a reference object. Uh, so for instance, the body. That's a good reference object because it's centered. Uh, otherwise, you can create a new object at 000, wherever you want to mirror things. Let's say this is, off, this is some other object off to the side somewhere, but you still want to mirror it in order to edit it. Uh, you can create a reference object at the center of it and use that as the point of reference for mirroring. Otherwise, it'll try and mirror at the zero line for the axis. That's why when we tried to uh, mirror in Y, it didn't show up here very clearly. Well, now it is. Um, why, why is it over there? Anyway, oh, because it's referencing the cylinder. If we were not referencing the cylinder, you see, the reason why it didn't show up is because it's going across the zero point of this axis, the, uh, the y-axis. So, yep, that's why. But you can use a reference object to solve that problem if necessary. Okay, so here we are, and now we can select that one face, this one. And so we want to inset first. Okay, but if we extrude like this right now, it's going to extrude in the wrong direction, right? That's not where we want to extrude. So we need to turn the face so that it's in the right plane. And in this case, we want it in the, going backwards in the Y plane. So we're going to make sure that all of the points on this are in the same plane. I'm going to press S, Y, 0. And there we go. Now they're all in the same plane. I'm going to commit with enter. And now, have, as we extrude, we extrude directly back. And if you wanted to fill in this gap, we just need to expand it in the x direction, right? It needs more space in the x direction. Um, not sure why it looks a little bit lopsided, but anyway. Um, size X and then move in the X direction. This is only if you wanted to do that. It's not necessary. 
we don't need to have it go all the way back either let's do a you know quality check by going into solid view make sure nothing's poking out in an unpleasant manner okay now I've, I've figured out what this bottom fairing is it's part of the the box that contains the landing gear it probably has other functions as well but uh, we'll, we'll add that as a separate part and now we've got the intakes and they're looking mighty fine uh, now we need to do the back end so just selecting that one make sure we haven't got anything else selected we're going to inset again and it doesn't appear on that side but it happened okay and then I'm gonna leave this face here this will be the back end that things attach the engines attached to or whatever what the faces that we actually want I right clicked it to select again because of the old blender um, you know we don't actually want this face particularly we just need the top bracket so cancel that I'm gonna select this and this and oh no 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 wrong axis uh, want to move those over here so that's a mighty thin line now okay and then we select this one and this one and we need to extrude now I might now you know what actually let me deselect I think I want to shift this vertice down as well and we should probably shift that one too okay nope yes okay extrude uh, let's get into yeah the orthographic view and transparent and we want to make sure that lines up right there okay and then I'm gonna deselect select the bottom vertices not the faces and I'm gonna move these up these uh, well we can do just select it like that extrude to there and uh, the top is sloping down here so we're going to need to uh, crunch up and I think I'm just gonna move these down uh, you can sort of see the sloping line down here I'm just gonna go along with that and then deselect, select the bottoms, move these up and then select all of these again E for extrude, go here deselect, select the bottom ones, move these up and then select all of them oh wait, uh, let's move the bottom, uh, top ones a little bit lower you don't seem to have kept in line here Okay, and then extrude. Make sure the top ones sort of keep going down. And then deselect, select the bottom ones, pull them up. And then let's do a check. Let's go into solid mode, Z6. And then that's what we have. Now, if you notice any sort of gap here, right, because I had uh, sort of tweaked these in a weird way, there's a gap there now. We can close that gap. Alt A to deselect. Select these gap vertices and just make sure that they go to zero. Oop. Well, first, let's make sure they're all at the same level. How about that? So this is the x-axis that we're talking about, z, x, 0. There we go. OK. I hope there's no extra ax, uh, no die. Oh, I picked up these nodes too. It doesn't matter. We all want, we want them all at 0. That's fine. There's uh, some sort of wonky business here for the same sort of reason. And we can fix that basically the same way. Click one verse, click 
click the other and then we want that them at the same level in the z-axis so SZ0 um, this one doesn't matter because it actually doesn't appear once you tab to go into object mode uh, I mean it's sort of inconspicuous these are too conspicuous though so we're going to do the same thing that's just I could have done that better so SZ0 okay so now we've got our engine area woo image so we could put a cylinder here to get that part of the engine and just leave the the nozzle for the engines in Kerbal Space Program I think this is a reasonable thickness for that part it's pretty thin in the back there though eventually but what's pointing out there is the wing Oh, which uh, maybe we should work on. So that's what our model looks like right now. And why don't we... We could add more geometry to the cube. But let's see what it looks like with the smoothing. Okay, well, the smoothing is a little bit excessive right now, you see. What we need to do is add another modifier called Edge Split. Edge split's gonna avoid that really sharp smoothing. And let's play around with the split angle. Probably 80 would be good. Uh, it looks okay. Uh, the, the images are getting in our way. Mm, the back end. Oh, uh, we've got the body sort of poking out here. We'll have to take a look at photos of how it looks like from the back end to really see what's going on. But I think the wing is going to have something to say about that. For now, just so that it doesn't look quite as ugly, I'm going to move this top part of the cube a little bit lower. So we're going to edge select uh, this one. Move that down a bit. Yeah. Okay, let's work on the wing. Now, there's two ways to do wings, and it's for different kinds of wings. The first kind of wing is the one with the round front. Uh, so, if most airfoils, you want a roundish front, so you'd go with a cylinder. But there are a few planes, especially fighter planes. The F-104 is especially true, but I think the Valkyrie is also one of these that they have really sharp edges up front, so you don't need the rounded edge and what would work better is a cube for the wing. The Valkyrie does not have a very rounded wing. It has a very sharp wing. So we are going to create a new cube. Now to differentiate between one cube and another, let's start naming these. So there's the body, there's the engine nacelle, no spaces. Okay, and then I'm going to create a new cube, add mesh cube and for now we'll uh, put it on both sides but eventually we'll just mirror it so yeah we'll, we'll work on that um, again we need to size y and extend quite a lot s y go to the back ish all right Thickness-wise, we should modify by this. So we see the back end of the wing goes all the way back here. And the front end, let's make the cube and the body disappear. Oops, not the cube. The engine nacelle disappear for a sec. We actually need the front end of the wing all the way up here. So tab, alt A, select the... Uh, no, select the vertices. Move those up front. Let's go into transparent mode. And we want to shrink them. So S, uh, not S, SZ. Oh, I, did I extrude it? No, I just failed to select both of those. Okay, hold on. I wanted all of you SC be careful not to flip them around 
Now this isn't as sharp as I wanted. We'll get to zooming in and fixing that. Alt A, select these, SZ. Yeah, they'll be very sharp, but now we've got a very thin box profile and now we need to add the, the thickness to it. So let's add another, well, there's the edge loop. I want one right here. I want to make it a little bit thicker and I want to move that up. And you can see the wing sort of curves upward as you might expect. Um, yeah, there's a lot you can do with the very specific shape of the wing. It's tilted up a little bit. Uh, so what we're actually seeing on the side view is the, a bit of the underside because it's actually tilted up. So we have to be careful and that's where other reference images will help. Right now this looks like this. This doesn't look much like a wing. But, well, we'll work with that. So actually it's not that thick. Actually thin, going up. Let's make another edge loop. Uh, let's make one here. Now this seems to be the side of the wing and that the underneath. I'm going to go with that theory. And so we're going to size it up and we're going to move it up. But it won't be the entire thickness so, because the outer part of the wing will be thinner than the inner part. So that's another complicated bit. This seems like more... Oh, that's the outer part of the wing, right? That's the part that actually moves down. We'll have to deal with that separately. That has to be a separate part. Uh, so probably the inner part of the wing is thicker than we're making it because it's obscured by the outer part of the wing. But part of the, uh, you can see there's this sort of pod here where it rotates at. That's pretty thick. So that's a separate piece that we'll have to, the hinge piece that we'll have to work on. Okay, top view time. So now we should split it in half. And we got a loop cut in this direction. And then we're going to delete half of it. So these guys go away. Mirror X, this seems fine. I'll put the mirror object anyway. Okay, now. This, this first bit, because I want to have some thickness to it, I'm going to move these in. So if we take a look at that, it basically has a razor edge thinness right at the front here. And then Alt AC gets to about there-ish. Looks like just by the edge slope we should move this back just a tad to there. Alt A C and this goes all the way out here. Now you can see there's sort of a leading edge thing going here and so the real thickness will be around here and this point will be thinner than that. So we'll need to work on that. Alt A C this out here. Now this is where the pod is, where it rotates at. So we're going to make us uh, follow that along instead of following the leading edge. Sort of clip into it a bit. Okay, this back in Obviously in this part is a different shape, but we'll go here first. And we're going to trust what we've got here from the side view more, more than the top view right now. And 
apart from everything else, it's because I'm going to eventually want to cut out this bit with the control surfaces because we're going to add the control surfaces with other parts in Kerbal Space Program. So, or we would have to use other parts anyway. So I'm going to make an edge loop there. Ah, that's not a bad edge loop to have either. Um, hold on a sec though. What I want is sort of a leading edge cut. So I'm going to use the knife. I'm going to create a edge cut here. And we have to do that on the bottom as well. And so actually ortho bottom by going to the top one first and then pressing keypad 9. And then following the same trajectory cross. Okay. Now on the original mesh I want to scale down the faces at the front here. So let's go solid. Nope. And this one, this one, this one, this one. Ah, not that one. Probably the back ones don't matter so much. CLZ less. Oh, we missed a point there. Okay. Now we've got sort of a leading edge thing going. I feel like the edge should be a little bit higher. Uh, but again, most of this needs to be guided by other reference images. I want this edge a little bit smaller in Z to sort of fit with the rest. This one doesn't matter too much because it's going to be covered up by that hinge. Okay, back to the top. And transparent view, wireframe view. Um, I, uh, I, I guess I'll take that cut here. And we already have a cut here. Uh, a cut here would be good. Right. Okay, so back to vertice mode, deselect Alt A. Let's move, oh, no, no, no. Let's move this one to here. That's our best. We'll, we'll have to look at the model to see where it ought to be. Alt A, C, move this one here. And then this whole block needs to go away. And that can simply be done by taking these vertices and go delete vertices. Ah, no. I don't, I didn't want to delete that one. Alt A, C, select those, delete vertices. Now, there's no face inside here. And we can see that better in solid view. Or maybe not. Maybe it's not so apparent. But there's no face in there once we delete those. So we need to fill those faces. Vertice mode. Select this one. This one. Ah, I don't want to move. Uh, okay, this. Mm, just select. This one. This one. This one, this one. Press F to fill. And then these four. Press F to fill. Okay, so now we've got that part of the wing and we've excluded those. Okay, and let's see it in context with the rest of the stuff. Okay, well we've got some uh, clipping. And that's because, remember, the wing is supposed to be tilted up at this point. Okay, deselect Z4. Select these guys. These should be tilted up a little bit less than the ones all the way out. I feel like the entire wing should be lower and then we tilt it up, but... 
let's see, we're at z minus 0.5. This is roughly halfway. I'm going to move that up a bit, up a bit. Uh, okay, let's try negative 0.4 and go solid. I want to see where the minimum is before we start clipping that stuff. There's still some here, but that's pretty good. And not unreasonable. I'm going to deselect those. Go to wireframe again, select all of this business. And this should probably be at 0.35. We're going to lift these up to negative 0.3. And uh, it's already at negative 0.35 basically. Okay, so that makes sense. Let's get that solid. And now there's no clipping because the wing has been has gotten some dihedral. Okay, there's still a matter of there was this little bit in here between the wing and the body, right? Okay, that's better. Uh, now a, a new cube to f do this fill in the area right right up to here so it goes from there to there so object mode add cube move shrink uh, alt, alt a select the back end go there up there and then alt a select the top ones to go up to this point. We've got sort of a slope going but first I want to shrink it so then it's a nice wedge. So Alt A select these two, select these two, scale S in the X direction, S X and shrink Usually it's a more of a little block there. It's not a sharp edge. I don't know if it's a sharp edge. I'll have to take a look at more. It seems like a completely smooth thing. So I'm going to go all the way down. Okay. And the wedge is sort of smoothed out. So we'll have to see what shape works. One of the problems with what we've done here is that the bomb of the cylinder curves in and the body doesn't really do that. We'll adjust that. We'll move some of these uh, vertices that are at the maximum width of the body. We'll move them down to the wing to fix that. Okay. So this is what it looks like right now. And it is sort of got nearly that smooth curve look going. And what we need to do is Alt C, uh, Alt A, and then C. And then I want to get this one too because we haven't mirrored it. And let's see what happens if we just tuck that in. That's more or less the shape that we're looking at when we look at the photos. What we need to do is this part of the body needs to come down to the to the wing. So back to the body. Uh, back to the body in object mode. Now we've got mirroring on the body? No. So we need to do that. <laughs> so back to the top view. So we're going to have to zoom in and make sure we get the right ones in wireframe mode. The front end, this, this nose bit is probably the most annoying. I think that's the left half. I'm a little bit worried about accidentally deleting an extra vertice. You can't, don't delete the center one. And looking at the pictures, it seems like this part of the canard is steady. So we'll model that. That won't be one of the control surface bits. I'm not just looking at one picture. I'm looking like all the Google image <laughs> photos that I can look at. So I'm not, that's why I'm not showing you a particular one. Okay, hopefully 
hopefully we've got just the oh this is definitely not right so let's unselect those yeah 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 want to make sure as much as possible that I've got it right there okay does that look like we've got just half hopefully well let's add the modifier mirror seems okay I'm sorry this bit is gonna be a little bit hard to follow because I'm thinking about how to smooth these lines out most effectively and this is more of the artistic element to things I see I mean it suddenly pops up with that thing okay because we've got the smoothing on it's not a exact result and I'm just taking a look at it fiddling around with details trying to make things look right there's a whole other sculpting section to blender okay and that looks reasonably like that's trying to solve that problem out well, I mean, it, it does start sloping in, so maybe no, that's not the right way of doing it. We'll just go out to whatever this point is right here. And we will drop this bottom node down. Uh, it creates too much of an edge, though. It needs to be smooth. Well, no, there's, there is an edge, actually. Oh, by the way, you can use your scroll wheel to change how big your circle select is. That may come in handy. So I'm just doing the same thing. I'm bringing three points to the same place and dropping the bottom one down to the wing. And then that's basically it. And we'll, we'll probably see later on whether this was a good approach or not. Okay, the tail end of this is still a bit weird. Is oh, is there no face at the back of it? Let me see. Yeah, there's no face. Fill with F. Well, we need to do some edge splitting there. Tuck that in. Move that up a bit. Uh, probably around here we need another loop cut. And we will have just these at the same level. and maybe on the back too instead of having it fully rounded here I'm going to deselect whatever we have selected select these and bring them to the same position yeah, so looks like that right now let's see what it looks like all as an object and get the engine to cells. Okay. So that's what we've got so far. We've got sort of nasty edges over here. And that's where it's sloping up here. Oh, we do need an upper curve because that slope isn't quite right. Ah, uh, let's change the split angle. Whoops. Let's go to 80 and then take a look. It's still pretty sharp there. Nope, that's not going to solve it like that. Okay, well, I think I'll work on that particular detail 
later. We've got some bigger fish to fry first. I'm gonna hide some of the stuff. It just occurred to me that, well, I, I might want to try and make this body its own collider. And that means we need to fix the bottom of this a little bit better than we have. So I'm going to select these nodes that we left behind while modifying things. Well, maybe I should do it in stages instead of all at once. I mean, to some extent, we can start that off, but this doesn't need to be that icky. So deselect, select these guys, make them all at the same Z level, Z, uh, SZ0, and that looks like a concave spot to me. Eh, it might not be possible. We might have to split it into multiple bits to actually get it safe. But let me get rid of some of this nonsense here. Whoops. See, and that looks better at least. Again, it's just selecting them, going SC0. That, that's already okay. That looks okay. Okay, anyway, that looks better. Let's see it in context with everything else. Yeah, yeah, that, that, that'll be better. All right, uh, let's add the, the cylinder for the hinge and then the outer part of the wing. And again, uh, for the outer part of the wing, we're not gonna have control surfaces because they won't work anyway. They, they wouldn't work. I mean, uh, we're gonna put them on this model. We're not going to add control surfaces in Kerbal Space Program. So object mode, add, mesh, cylinder, and where's our cylinder? Cylinder's all the way over there, needs to be rotated around the x-axis, we'll say 90, and moved out here, sy. This will be mirrored across as well so we can get the other one. Um, the whole thing can be thinner. We could have done that initially when we spawned it. But this is fine as long as we remember to commit the scale. Uh, scale. I think, I don't know what to make of this bit. I need to take a look at an image. I don't think the hinge extends to that part actually. Let's go to the top view. Oop, sorry, I was clicked in the browser to see the images. Okay, well, from this view, we don't even have this extended to the back. A to select everything, by the way. I probably haven't said that before. Okay, and then deselect. Let's go into wireframe. That's about the right width for the back bits. It's pretty clear that we need a loop cut here. A loop cut here. A loop cut here. I'm not going to follow along with the image because they don't seem to be all in a row. Let me deselect, select the front end of this, and we need to move this to where this line is. It seems like we need to scale it down, and in this case it'll only scale down in the uh, what you call it, X and Z directions, not the Y of the view we're in and then we want to extrude up to that tip and scale that down all the way down to a little tiny bit. We could round it out by making another loop cut right here and making that larger. And then we have to mirror this whole deal across the body, let's say, to the other side of the wing. Okay, and now we've got, uh, they, they, they've got these little indentations though. So back to the top, we're gonna do that. And there's, a, there's a number of ways we could do this, actually.
I'm going to select. Oop, oop. Ah, I'll circle select the center one, and we can just go S for shrink, and that'll get that. We can create an array. If I want all these to be different chunks, I mean, on the drawing they're not exactly the same size, but I'm sure in real life they are. Hmm. So, well, this is a little bit complicated, but it'll demonstrate another thing that you can do with Blender that is awful handy sometimes. So, I'm going to deselect and I'm going to just get rid of these. Okay. And then I'm going to select this one. I'm going to make it its own part. So, uh, no, that's not parent. Okay, so press P and then it'll give you this dialog. Separate selection. I want to separate this selection into a new part. So that's what it is. It is now cylinder one. So I'm going to rename stuff. Double click this one. Hinge front. I'm going to call this hinge uh, for simplicity, say dot one because it will it'll probably start numbering them anyway. Um, I'm going to, well, we want the mirroring and everything. Uh, let's see, I want to see what it looks like here. We want to smooth it out and then do the edge split right now. So tab object shade smooth add modifier edge split oh. it's not really doing as much edge splitting as I expected the ends I don't think we need to fill in the ends that's just gonna be extra and this edge split doesn't seem to be doing anything so that's fine okay so we've got this body hinge zero zero one and we gotta add array now you see array which is this bit right here added a new one right next to it but we don't want right one we do not want one right next to it and that's this relative offset what we want is one right behind it that's in the y-axis so we want one one step oops okay I think we fail yeah we failed to apply rotation <laughs> okay so when that happens when it's not the direction you expect you fail to apply rotation control a apply rotation now one in this direction aha so now we've got another one it's a separate part it's a separate part and we can have as well it will be a separate part I actually should say right now it's the same part and we need a few of those and let's see one two three well the count at total two one two three four five six seven it seems so seven aha well that seems too long doesn't it just and what's going on back here I don't know what's going on back there oh the whole thing is a little bit too high too we'll fix that in a bit mmm well you see Hmm. Tab. We're just going to select this one. And we are going to shrink it a little bit, I think. Because we want seven of them. The drawing shows seven of them going back to that edge. So we are going to select. Oh, definitely. Oh, just select all. Uh, uh, there we go. We've selected all the, uh, all the stuff there. And we're going to shrink it in the y direction. S Y shorten. See how it all comes together. And then actually a little bit bigger on the y direction. There we go. Oh, we had a spare face there. We need to get rid of. That is part of the hinge front. Okay. Now we can separate all of these 
bits of the hinge. We might not want to do that just yet. Um, and we certainly don't want to do it because they're not meeting up with the front end of this yet. Okay, let's go to ortho view. Oh, it's too short. Tab, hinge, tab, SY. Let's extend it a little bit further. Okay, and then move this up. There we go, much better. Okay, and then we want in object mode to take all these hinge bits and the hinge front. So hold shift to select both. You can click inside the window as well. And we want to shift this down directly. I don't know about how it's meeting up the wing. We'll deal with that later. On the back end, I want to seal this. So, well, let's separate them out then. I don't know. I'm going to save at this point. Going to save that this as 01, let's say. Cuz I might want to undo this later on if things go horribly wrong. Uh I've got a spare thing there. What, what's this? Who ordered this one? Hmm. Very suspicious. Okay, so back to hinge one. We can apply the array. And then press P. Oh, in edit mode, press P separate by loose parts and now you've got all the hinges they're also being mirrored so again P separate by loose parts it understands that a certain bit was not originally connected to the other bit when we did the array those new bits were not connected to the old bit really so now they're all separate hinge parts and we can close the back end of the last one the last one we should go back into object mode is actually hinge 001 right now uh, it has its own way of naming them the the original one got turned into 000 and then two three four five six and then the back one is 01 now it's weird another thing to note is that the center of them stays at the original one see this is centered all the way over there. If you wanted to change that, um, set origin, set origin to center of mass. Volume goes there. Do I have something else selected? No. Well, surface. That's always good. So then it'll set it back to where you want it to be. That's only important if you want to rotate it or something. Um, anyway, tab, let's uh, alt, oh, edge, uh, we want edges, alt, edge select, and press F to fill. And it looks like that's a little bit bumpy, so I'm going to edge split that too. Okay, so that's the hinge. And let's create the outer wing. So add mesh, we'll go with a cube again. So scale Z to scale it down. Perhaps this time we should keep it simple. Let's go top view. Deselect edit mode, not deselect. And uh, vertices go into wireframe. Select the back ones, move them all the way to the back. And Alt A, select the edge one, move it all the way to that edge. We obviously need a loop cut and we need one right there. And then Alt A to deselect and C, select that one, move those to that edge. And then Alt A, C, select these, move them forward to that point. 
Alt A C, select that one, move that in. Okay. And then we might want a few other cuts. We definitely want the leading edge cut. Let me just use a knife. And again on the bottom. Technically I should do this. I should have done that in surface mode, not wireframe, but it, it ended up all right. Okay, now we want the inner faces, uh, the, sorry, leading edge faces to scale down so that we have a thinner leading edge and this outer bit too. So S, Z, scale down, scale down, scale down. Okay, and we can actually just click in here and use it as a slider to scale it down even more, however thin you want it. Or type in, you could click that and type it in. Okay, let's see it in full solid view. That is not bad. And let's mirror that across the body in X. Let's move uh, that one image off further. Okay, so we've done the outer wings. Uh, we need to do the other surfaces, the vertical stabilizer, the forward canards, and then some of the tiny bits like up there, down there. But I think this, this does it for the video. Uh, There's the basics. Next time we'll add those stabilizers. We'll try and clean up some stuff. We'll animate the outer wing portions. And I don't know if we're, we're going to get to texturing, but we'll see. But I'll leave it here. I think that's plenty to cover in one video. Probably it's been too long anyway. So anyway, I hope uh, this was helpful. And uh, if you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.